Mysteries of the Sith Expansion Pack Game Review. Mara Jade, I think is how you pronounce her name, is a bit of a known name to Star Wars fanatics. And if you know who she is, then you're one of the people who will enjoy her being the lead in this game. And if you aren't, the game doesn't bother explaining who she is. I don't really know who she is because I'm not one of the fanatics. And I didn't really... From what I've heard of what she is, it didn't seem like it was that vital that it was her in this game. It could have been someone else. Or they could have explained who she was. Anyway. You start out as Kyle Katarn, but on an early mission for the Rebels, he goes missing, and Jade is sent out to try to find him, to investigate. That's basically the plot, if you can call it a plot. The missions aren't really connected. There's sort of the overarching storyline of Find Kyle, but Kyle Katarn, the stars of the first two Dark Forces games. But that's kind of it. And several missions have nothing to do with finding him. They're just missions for the rebels, you know. I guess it isn't a huge deal, but after a game that had such a compelling overarching storyline, I mean, for being relatively simplistic, it is a bit annoying that this one is so disconnected. And the real culprit is that, I doubt this was really planned, it was just kind of, hey, the Jedi Knight made money, let's, you know, see if we can't force throw another one out there. And they did, and this is what we got. The Force Powers are now... There's more of them, and several of the new Force Powers are utterly useless. We get Force Push, and I get why they included such a power, but it's really not that well handled. It's basically useless. And there are several other basically useless powers. And in single player, you can actually unlock, you know, add points to just about all of them. And you really have no guide as to, you know, which is good at all. And that's kind of annoying, you know. The game presents far too many possibilities, and then, you know, you're just left to figure out what is good and what isn't, and what's useful and what isn't. And yes, they do in fact grant you full access to both sides, both the light side and the dark side, because, BS alert, it's about how you use them. There are no sides. Yes, that's the lovely little line that they came up with to do away with any kind of, you know, Jedi Knight has you, <coughs> excuse me, choosing between the light side and the dark side and taking the full consequences. And this one says, <laughs> screw all that, no choice, no consequences, and yeah. The level design is a bit varied. We get some very, very linear levels. They do still make some really massive areas, but I don't know, the sense of fun is just mostly gone, and some of the levels are just so obnoxiously, obviously linear that, you know, it really takes you out of it. And I also just think it comes off a bit awkward how there are friendly NPCs in Jedi Knight, but they tend to be under attack. Like, you come into a region that is being attacked by, you know, the people you're 
fighting. So, yeah, you know, it's not just, you know, you'll want to fight these forces. And thus, you know, suddenly these, you know, random civilians are, you know, likely to be, you know, you might want to protect them if you want to be on the light side. In this, they're just kind of there, and they're like levels where you're sort of not supposed to draw attention to yourself, but then you can still fight some and it won't draw attention to you. I think uh, early game, early first person shooter, you know, trying the whole, uh, let's see if we can't, you know, work in some kind of spy or secret stuff kind of thing, it never really worked all that well in my opinion. Anyway, there isn't really anything new to the lightsaber, basically. There are new force powers, as I already mentioned, and this one holds a particular place as a thorn in my side because this is where the lightsaber throw came into the mix. And I know, I know, it happens in the movies once in one of the movies. I don't see what's so fun about it. It takes part of the skill out of fencing with the lightsabers, you know. What kind of swordsman throws his sword just like that? No, it... yeah. Now, the... There's also a bit of a... In, in Jedi Knight, when you force pull a weapon out of a stormtrooper's hands, he'll pretty much just be useless. He can't do anything, so he'll just you know, run around. And that's kind of it, you know. In this, they just go at you with fists. Yeah, so, you know, if you pull the weapons away from, like, three or four, and you don't kill them right away, they might actually try to corner you and just beat you to death. And yes, this actually happens. That's kind of... I get that they felt that they had to solve that problem, because it is awkward with stormtroopers running around without doing anything, but it's also kind of awkward when they suddenly you know, run at you and beat... I don't know, I just... I don't see the stormtroopers of the movies really doing that. Although, we know that at least one of them can take a door to the face, so, you know. The ending is pretty clever, and it does show a little promise again, but all in all, the final product product is just not that good. It's nowhere near as good as Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight and I don't know if you aren't just you know really in love with that gameplay and you want some more if you're not in that situation you're probably not gonna enjoy this all that much. But then again you know if you really didn't think Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight was all that good, you might like this. It's a little bit of a different approach. And, you know, it... If the lack of a overarching storyline appeals to you, if each mission being separate, sort of, appeals to you, then, you know, by all means, do note that there isn't I don't think a proper level selector, so you know, you'll have to save at the beginning of each level if you want to replay a mission or something. Um, 